Hey guys, this is Eric from Invensys, and I welcome you to our YouTube channel. In today's session, we will discuss Agile Scrum Master interview questions. Agile Scrum is one of the most effective methodologies that is used to meet the current need for accurate projects. Each Agile and Scrum team member is expected to play an important role in the organization. So, interviewers are looking for individuals that have a solid understanding of Agile and Scrum concepts. Also, there are plenty of job openings in Agile in the IT market that offer attractive salaries. Therefore, it becomes important to prepare yourself for some common and frequently asked interview questions on Agile Scrum Master. Before we get started, I would like to address the agenda for today's topic. We will start our session with a quick introduction to who is an Agile Scrum Master and what are their roles and responsibilities, then start the interview questions with a few introductory questions, which will usually be asked as the starter questions to continue the interview. Then moving on, talk about frequently asked questions and scenario-based questions. Now, if you are new to our channel, do take this time to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell, never to miss an update from the Invensys Learning Channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Agile project management and its practices which will help you get your dream job, check out Invensys Learning's Agile Project Management Certification Training on Scrum Master, Professional Scrum Master, Scrum Product Owner, Agile Leadership, Safe Scrum Master. All of the necessary information is given in the description box below. Now, starting with our first topic, who is an Agile Scrum Master? A Scrum Master is an individual who uses Agile project management methodologies to lead a team through a project. They ensure a successful project, by coordinating all communication and cooperation between leadership and team members. They are basically Scrum Masters, using Agile project management methodologies. Talking about some of the skills of Agile Scrum Master. They are skilled in Agile project management methodology, software development and business analysis. So this was just a brief introduction to Agile Scrum Master. Now, let us talk about some of the common roles and responsibilities. Organizing daily stand-up meetings, reviews, demos, and other project-related meetings. Next, mentoring team members with their tasks. Then, guiding the Scrum concepts and best practices to the team. They also have to promote open discussion and conflict resolution. Next, identifying and addressing issues before they become a problem. Then, updating all the activities in a project management tracking tool. So starting with our first question. What is Agile? This question can be answered according to your knowledge and understanding of Agile. Now, Agile refers to a set of principles that are applied to software development and project management. It's a well-known incremental and iterative method that focuses on breaking down a vast and complicated project into smaller, more manageable chunks that can be finished in smaller iterations. Agile is a collaborative strategy used to complete work quickly, adapt to changing demands, and optimize workflow. This was about Agile. Now, moving on to our next question. What is Scrum? This question can also be answered according to your knowledge and understanding of Scrum. Now, Scrum is an Agile development technique that uses iterative and progressive methods to build applications or products. Its technique is based on a set of well-defined tasks and activities that have to be implemented to develop the products. It is designed to help teams adapt to changing conditions and user needs, by reprioritizing activities and using short release cycles while allowing the team to learn and improve. This Agile Scrum interview question is often asked as a starter question to get the interview moving. Next question, define the different roles in Scrum. First is the product owner. They represent the customers and stakeholders. There is only one product owner who communicates the team's overall mission and vision for the product. Finally, the product owner monitors the product backlog and accepts completed work after each increment. Second is the Scrum Master. They are a Scrum team member who makes sure that the team works according to the Scrum rules. In addition, the Scrum Master should ensure that the team performs at their best. It might include removing roadblocks, organizing meetings, and assisting the product owner with the product backlog. Third is the development team. This includes individuals working in a team, who do the work and develop the products. 
Next question, what are some of the common responsibilities of the Scrum team? During each sprint, the working products should be developed and delivered. Next, ownership and transparency are to be assured for the job assigned to team members. Next, clear and accurate information should be provided to create a successful daily Scrum meeting. Next, they must work together with the rest of the team. Moving on to our fifth question. Differentiate between Agile and Scrum. The difference between Agile and Scrum is one of the common Agile Scrum interview questions asked in an interview. First talking about Agile. It is a set of principles that is gradual and iterative in nature. It's best for projects with a small group of professionals. Next, the project head is in charge of all tasks and is important to the project's success. Also, changes cannot be handled daily. Next, it requires regular delivery to the end user. Then, interactions between cross-functional teams take place in person. Next, design and execution are simple. On the other hand, Scrum. Scrum is an implementation of the Agile methodology. Also, it's used by organizations that have to deal with constantly changing requirements. Next, there is no one in charge. Instead, the Scrum Master and the team are in charge of dealing with issues. Then, teams can respond quickly to changes. Next, sprints give users functional builds of the final product to test and give feedback on it. Then, collaboration is facilitated via daily stand-up meetings. Finally, the design and execution can be innovative and experimental. Now, the sixth question is, what are the various artifacts of the Scrum process? First, a product backlog is a list of new features, updates to features, bug repairs, infrastructure improvements, and other activities that must be completed before a specific output is obtained. Second, the sprint backlog is a subset of the product backlog that contains tasks that the team is working on to meet the sprint goal. The teams identify the tasks to be completed from the product backlog first. These items are then added to the sprint backlog. Third, product increment. It is the total of all product backlog items completed in a sprint plus the previous sprint's increment value. The seventh question is, how are the product and sprint backlog different? First, backlog of products. Now, it is a checklist of tasks that are to be done to build the product. Then, the product owner collects the backlog from the client and assign it to the team. Next, the end product is the result. And it is based on the client's vision. Next, the product owner usually maintains the backlog until the project is completed. On the other hand, Sprint Backlog. It's a checklist of things to get done throughout each sprint. Next, the team gathers the backlog from the product owner and establishes the sprint timeline. Then, each sprint has a unique end product. Next, it depends on the product owner's vision for the product. Next, the team adds backlogs to each new sprint. Now, moving on to our eighth question. Who is a Scrum Master? And what do they do? A Scrum Master is a team member who is responsible for promoting and supporting the use of Scrum. They have knowledge about Scrum's theory, processes, principles, and values. They ensure that the team adheres to Scrum's ideals, principles, and practices. They eliminate any distractions or barriers to the project's development. Also, during the sprint, the Scrum Master ensures that the team provides value. Now, let us discuss the frequently asked questions in an Agile Scrum Master interview. What is a sprint? The term sprint is used in Scrum to indicate a time-specific iteration. During a sprint, a specific product module or feature is developed. A sprint can last or go on anywhere from a week to two weeks. Moving on to our next question. What is velocity? The quantity of work performed by a team during a sprint is measured by velocity. In a sprint, it refers to the number of user stories that have been finished. The 11th question. What are Sprint Zero and Spike? The amount of effort put in to establish a rough framework of the product backlog is referred to as Sprint Zero. It also contains information about calculating the product release dates. Now, Sprint Zero is necessary for the following tasks. Creating a framework for the project, as well as research spikes. 
maintaining a minimalist design. Next, being lightweight and having a low velocity. Moving on, the spike is a collection of activities that use extreme programming for research, design, inquiry, prototyping, and other purposes. The spike tries to mitigate the technical approach's risks by acquiring knowledge to comprehend requirements better and increase dependability. The twelfth question is, how can discord be dealt with within the scrum team? The fundamental source of the problem must be discovered and treated. It's crucial to gain full ownership. Attempt to settle the conflict. Next, to guide the team, a shared understanding must be formed. Continuous monitoring and comprehensive visibility must also be provided. The thirteenth question is, what is a user story? A user story is a tool for agile software development and project management that offers team short, natural language descriptions of one or more project aspects written from the perspective of the end users. The user story does not go into great depth, instead of focusing on how specific forms of work will benefit the end user. In this situation, the end user may be an external component or a client or colleague within the firm. After conversations with the team, the criteria to make a user story a reality are added. The 14th question is, what happens in a sprint retrospective? After the sprint review, the sprint retrospective takes place. Past mistakes, future challenges, and new approaches to dealing with them will all be reviewed in this discussion. This information is used in the sprint planning process. The 15th question is, how does a Scrum Master track sprint progress? Scrum Masters can monitor sprint progress using burndown charts. The remaining work is shown by the vertical axis in the burndown chart, while the horizontal axis represents the overall number of sprints. Additionally, sprint progress may be tracked using daily scrum meetings, scrum retrospectives, sprint planning, escape defects, defect density, and team velocity. The 16th question is, what are the different events that happen during the scrum process? Scrum defines four events during each sprint or sometimes called scrum ceremonies. First, sprint planning. The whole scrum team collaborates and plans to work on and define sprint goals during the sprint process. Second is daily scrum, which takes place every day for roughly 15 minutes and is a timed event for the entire team to work towards the sprint objective. Third is a sprint review. The sprint review process occurs at the end of the sprint, during which the Scrum team and stakeholders assess the entire process and, if necessary, adjust the product backlog. Fourth Sprint Retrospective The Scrum team reviews how the last sprint went and where they can improve. The seventeenth question is, what are some of the key skills of a Scrum Master? Firstly, Scrum and Agile ideas are well understood. Next, Organizational Skills. Then, to be able to train and educate the team to follow Scrum methods. Next, be familiar with the technology utilized by the team. Next, having the capacity to deal with and settle issues promptly. The 18 question is, what is Scrum of Scrums? It's a phrase for scaled agile solutions that allow numerous Scrum teams to communicate and control. It works best in cases where teams are working together on complicated projects. It's also used to assure that the necessary levels of transparency, cooperation, and adaptation are met and that the goods are deployed and delivered. The 19th question is, what is user story mapping? User story mapping represents and organizes user stories to help in system knowledge, backlog management, release planning, and providing customer value. They arrange the user tales according to their importance on the horizontal axis. On the vertical axis, they arrange it with increasing degrees of sophistication. The 20th question is, what is a burn-up and burn-down chart? A burn-up chart is a tool used to track the completed work and represent the overall amount of work that has to be done during a sprint or project. Next, a burn-down chart is a representation of how fast working through user stories is. It measures total effort to the amount of work completed in each iteration. The 21st question is, what happens in daily stand-up sessions? Stand-up sessions are 15-minute daily meetings. Daily stand-up sessions assist in determining what tasks went well and what tasks went poorly. What tasks did you finish? Next, 
what tasks need to be completed, and when do they need to be completed? They also discuss the team's stumbling blocks, or any other issues or things related to the project in the daily stand-up sessions. The meeting helps in comprehending the project's overall scope and progress. The 22nd question is. What is Scrum Ban? Scrum Ban is a hybrid approach that combines Scrum and Kanban. Scrum Ban may be utilized to satisfy the demands of the team while reducing work batching and implementing a pull-based approach. Scrum Ban cleverly combines Scrum structure with Kanban's flexibility and visibility. The 23rd question is. How to deal with score creep? Score creep is when a modification is made without assessing its influence on the scope, time, cost, and other factors. Next, to deal with score creep, you need to do the following. First is regularly, monitor the tasks that are being done. Next, understanding and communicating the vision to the team and ensuring that everyone is on the same page. Then, Noting and evaluating project requirements regularly with what is to be delivered to remind the team and client of the signed off requirements. Next, ensure that any modifications go through change control and are implemented based on change request approval. The 24th question is, how are user stories, epics, and tasks different? First, user stories. They give the team straightforward explanations of the business's requirements from the end user's point of view. Second is epics. Epics are a collection of interconnected user stories. They're generally big and complicated. Third is tasks. Tasks are used to split down user stories further. They are the smallest unit used to monitor work in Scrum. A task is normally completed by a single person or a two-person team. The 25th question is, how is estimation done in a Scrum project? Now, Estimation is done to consider the user stories for the sprint, by priority and by the ability of the team to deliver during the sprint. User stories are valued based on how tough they are to complete. The user stories difficulty is measured using a certain scale. Scales can be classified into categories. For example, sizing by numeric, let's say 1 to 10 or Fibonacci sequence. Now, before moving forward, if you like this video and haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, do subscribe and hit the notification bell to never miss an update from the Invensys Learning Channel. Now, if you are looking for an online training certification in Agile Scrum Master, check out the link given in the description box below. Agile Scrum Master Certification Training by Invensys Learning will help learn how to facilitate, coach, and enable cross-functional and self-managed teams as a Scrum Master and apply all this knowledge in practice. We also offer other certification training, on Scrum Product Owner, Agile Leadership, Safe Scrum Master, Project Management Fundamentals, Prince 2, Idle Certification. All of the necessary information is given in the description box below. Now, moving on to our next interview question. The 26th question is, what are some risks in Scrum? How are they handled? Now, some examples of Scrum risks are, Budget. The danger of going over budget. Next is, people or groups. Team members must have the necessary skills and abilities. Next is, sprint or duration and deliverable sprint, extending the time limit and broadening the area of job. Then, product. User tales and epics are examples of products. The risk here is user tales and epics that aren't well defined. Next, not having appropriate resources. Identifying, assessing, analyzing, developing, and implementing risk responses and monitoring and managing them is all part of risk management. These are carried out continuously from the beginning to the end of the project. It is critical to recognize that its proximity to its actual occurrence determines the risk's impact. The 27th question is, what is empirical process control in Scrum? Empiricism refers to work that is based on facts, experiences, data, observations, and experiments. Scrum is defined and executed to ensure that project progress and interpretation are based on facts. Transparency, observation, and adaptation are all essential components. The team's thinking and the shift of thought process and culture are essential for achieving the agility required by the organization. The 28th question is, 
what are the responsibilities of a product owner? First is, they define the project's vision. Next, create relevant user stories based on the customer's demands. Then, assess the progress of the project. Next, serves as a point of contact for any product-related inquiries. The 29th question is, what are MVP and MMP? The notion of a minimum viable product or MVP is a lean startup concept that emphasizes the importance of learning while product development. Individuals may test and comprehend the concept by getting exposed to the initial version, which was for target consumers and users. To do that, one needs to collect all relevant data before learning from it. The MVP approach is to design a product, provide it to customers, and study how they use, perceive, and understand it. This will also help you understand your clients' or users' needs. The MMP or Minimal Marketable Product refers to the product's description, including a few characteristics that fulfill the consumer's needs. The MMP would also help the organization reduce the time to market. The 30th question is, what does DOD mean? The written codes, comments on coding, unit tests, integration testing, design papers, release notes, and other deliverables make up the definition of DOD or DOD. This gives verifiable advantages to project development. Now, when it comes to identifying deliverables that will help the project attain its objective, the Department of Defense is very helpful to Scrum. It helps in the following, determining the steps required for the delivery of the iteration. Next, applying appropriate technology, such as burndown to increase the process efficiency. Then, providing timely feedback throughout the project's life cycle. Next, assuring that the product backlog items are thoroughly reviewed and comprehended. Then, creating a checklist for the product's backlog items. Next, including the product owner in the sprint review and sprint retrospective. The 31st question is, how can a scrum master demonstrate the concept of servant leader? A scrum master is usually referred to as the scrum team's servant leader. They can demonstrate the concept by the following ways. First, it's not a good idea to just go through the instructions. Next, be loyal to the team in order to gain trust. Then, keep the team safe from threats from the outside. Next, lead the team and avoid conflicts and debates between the teams. The 32nd question is, what are the three pillars of Scrum? First is transparency. Those responsible for the end result must be able to view key aspects of the process. Transparency mandates that these aspects are to be specified by a consistent standard, so that the viewers understand what they are viewing. Next, inspection. Scrum users must inspect Scrum artifacts and progress toward a sprint goal frequently to discover undesirable deviations. Inspection should not be carried out so often that they burden the job. Inspections are most successful when trained inspectors do them attentively at the place of work. Next, adaption. Now, if an inspector determines that one or more process sections have deviated beyond permitted limits, the technique or the material being used for the process must be corrected. A correction should be made as quickly as possible to avoid further deviation. The 33rd question is, what are some drawbacks to using Scrum? Scrum requires the presence of professionals with prior expertise. Next, teams should work together and be dedicated to achieving goals. Then, a Scrum master with less experience might lead to the project's failure. Next, tasks must be well stated. Otherwise, the project will be full of errors. It is better suited to smaller projects and more difficult to expand to larger, more complex ones. The 34 question is, what happens during a sprint review process? At the end of each sprint, a sprint review is performed to check the product increment and, if necessary, update the product backlog. The scrum team and stakeholders collaborate on work completed in the previous sprint process, market research, timetable estimates, budget estimates, and possible capabilities. The sprint review procedure does not have a set duration, it lasts around 4 hours. The 35th question is, what are the four values of Agile software development as stated in the Agile Manifesto? Individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working software over comprehensive documentation. 
Customer Collaboration Over Contract Negotiation Responding to Change Over Following a Plan The 36th question is What are the key principles of Agile software development? The key principles of Agile software development are customer satisfaction. Use change requirements. Get continuous feedback. Improvise collective teamwork. Focus on active processes. Proper face-to-face communication. Motivate the team people. Sustainable development. Technical excellence. Be simple. Self-organized. Adjust strategies. The 37th question is. What is scope creep? How to overcome it? Scope creep is when requirements are not properly stated, and new features are added to an existing product in the course of a project. So, to avoid scope creep, keep the following considerations in mind. The requirements for the project must be clearly outlined. The progress of the project should be checked regularly. The sprint backlog has to be properly examined. The 38th question is, Can you name some of the tools used in the Scrum project? Some of the most widely used Scrum tools are Jira, Trello, ClickUp, Yodas, Vivify, Scrum, Do. Now, let us discuss the scenario-based question in an Agile Scrum Master interview. How much capacity would you consider to refactor, fix important bugs and explore new technologies and ideas? The team commits the sprint items according to the available capacity when planning the sprint. To achieve optimal execution, the team should devote between 80 and 90% of its overall capacity, anything higher than that will impede its performance. In addition, bugs, refactoring, and research all need regular attention to avoid accumulating technical debt. Although the teams already had items from the product owner to work on, some teams set aside 25% of their capacity for this task. Also, it is a nice practice that the teams may follow a 15-10-5 allocation of the Scrum team's capacity, which implies that 15% of a team's capacity is allocated to technical debt, 10% to defects, and 5% to exploratory work. If the team can stick to these deadlines, it will be able to meet the code quality and maintenance requirements of most software programs. It's a good practice to follow sprint by sprint but it's okay if the team cannot do so in a given sprint due to high priority delivery. The 40 question is, how to ensure the team delivers action items on time? The team must identify action items for the retrospective to be effective. This provides the team with a starting point for discourse, but simply naming will not be enough. The action item should be closed as soon as possible, and the scrum master should take steps to accomplish this. Every action item should have an owner, and teams should avoid assigning several owners to a single item since ownership becomes diluted. The Scrum Master should keep track of action items in a program or spreadsheet that is available to everyone on the team. Having a backlog of action items is also beneficial because it allows the team to prioritize. The team should go over the items from the last retrospective and discuss their status in the retrospective meeting so that everyone knows where they are and what further needs to be done to reach the objective of closure. A retrospective tracker is a tool that categorizes action items into priority, ownership, status, description, identified on, and kind. Working on the action items offers the team confidence that they are progressing in the right direction and increases their feeling of ownership. The 41st question is, your team performance is constantly not meeting commitments, and its velocity is very unstable. How would you solve this problem? Here are a few things you need to keep in mind. First, planned leaves or holidays. Now, the sprint commitment is equivalent to the team's total available capacity. When there are vacations or departures, the commitment will be reduced, decreasing the velocity. Next, legacy product. If the code was created many years ago and there is no documentation, new members may struggle to understand it. Next, new hire. So, Onboarding a new associate will impact sprint commitments because the member is new and will require time to get up to speed. Next, resignation. If team members leave, it may take some time to replace the position. Next, experience. If the team comprises both experienced and new members, the degree of seniority may obstruct the team's performance. There can be many reasons why the team is not meeting commitments, 
but scrum masters need to keep an eye for any such patterns and if any such patterns appear, try to help the teams get back on track through coaching and adoption of best practices. The 42nd question is, how will a scrum master prevent extreme weariness induced due to retrospectives? Scrum teams become bored of repeating the same retrospective sprint pattern sprint after sprint. The scrum master must be willing to try out new patterns and, on occasion, relocate the team. Anything that repeats itself in the same manner frequently tends to create a monotonous meeting environment. Some teams may decide to go out to lunch and have a talk there. This promotes teamwork and provides a safe environment in which to communicate. The scrum master must ensure that the retrospective's content is not lost while also establishing a pleasant setting to avoid boredom. Even if you're using a variety of patterns, the goal should always be the same. The 43rd question is, if a scrum team member thinks sprint planning is a waste of time, how would you deal with them? Sprint planning sessions are essential for a scrum team's effective operation. If a team member believes they are meaningless, the first step is to determine why. Ask specific questions about why they think it is a waste of time, and why should they skip these crucial meetings. Assist them in realizing that each scrum team member is an important part that holds the entire team together. Explain to them how their absence from meetings might undermine their efforts. The 44th question is, can the scrum team be involved in the product discovery process? If so, explain how. It's a good idea to involve the scrum team in the discovery process early in the product development life cycle. Agile refers to teams including stakeholders early in the development process to ensure everyone is on the same page. Consider the following advantages of early involvement. By identifying technical implementation issues early in the process, development teams can assist in modifying the specifications with the client. Next, the team begins to share a shared understanding of what needs to be developed with the product owner. In addition, teams may occasionally help the product owner in identifying requirements that have gone unnoticed. Then, they have a shared understanding of what needs to be built. It also helps teams stay committed and confident, pushes them to take responsibility for their work, and, most significantly, boosts team morale. Next, to help achieve this, the Scrum Master might start including the teams in early product conversations when the requirements are still hazy. Then, the team and the product owner can create the product backlog. The 45th question is, mention some of the cases where Scrum is not suggested? Now, if you know any cases based on your previous experience, you can mention them. Also, certain situations where using Scrum is not suggested are, when people using Scrum previously have had a bad experience. Next, when an organization is not ready to adopt Agile values and practices. Then, when you look for a one-stop solution for all the problems. Next, when the requirements are not allowed to evolve. The 46th question is, how would you handle a Scrum transition of an organization that was heavily reliant on the waterfall model before? Here are a few ways as to how you can handle Scrum transition from the waterfall model. First, assemble a team with experienced members. Then, upgrade the project management software you're presently using to suit the Agile environment. Next, organize a full-fledged retrospective meeting. Then, conduct Scrum workshops, user stories, cost estimates and so on. The 47th question is, as a Scrum master, how will you handle daily Scrum meetings with remote teams? The remote Scrum team should have clear communication, openness, and a commitment to continuous improvement. Some of the tips that can help are Make yourself available to the entire team. Next, allow team members to collaborate, share, and get to know each other. Next, a collection of interesting and important facts. Then, develop relationships, create a positive team culture, and resolve problems, and Scrum sessions are not only for sharing information. They also include discussing the project's more complex components. In addition, peer-to-peer -peer status updates are relevant and useful. The 48th question is, what would you do if a team member could not complete a task for a sprint? You could have a one-on-one -on -one talk with a team member as a Scrum master to figure out why they're lagging behind. For example, perhaps they're overworked, don't know how to utilize a tool, or deal with personal concerns. 
then you may implement a suitable solution, such as dividing out the burden or also bringing in a subject matter expert who can teach a tool or finish a section of the assignment. Next, the 49th question is. Someone on your team hasn't liked Scrum, which negatively affects the project. What would you do? Many individuals are unfamiliar with Scrum. Some employees may find it difficult to adapt, particularly in companies where systems have been in place for many years. You can approach this problem in a variety of ways. Some Scrum masters may go back to the Scrum ideals and push teams to think differently than they are accustomed to thinking from the start. Now, others can try to teach the team members a sense of ownership of the product so that they are involved in the process. Others may hire a professional trainer to provide formal instruction. The 50th question is, how would you instill an agile mindset and approach across departments? While a traditional waterfall workplace focuses on the final result, agile workplaces divide projects into smaller tasks with realistic deadlines. This raises production and improves quality. Here are some ideas for instilling an agile mindset. A scrum master must communicate the concept of project outcomes with the team members. All performance measures must be developed and shared with all stakeholders. Next, customers should be involved regularly to foster a sense of shared ownership. Next, team members should be active in all processes to help the transition to an agile environment. Next, make flexible strategies that can be adjusted as needed. With this, we have come to an end of this interview questions video. I hope it was helpful. If this has spiked your interest and you want to know more about Agile Scrum, I would highly recommend you to opt for Agile Scrum Master Certification Training by Invensys Learning. It will help learn how to facilitate, coach, and enable cross-functional and self-managed teams as a Scrum Master and apply all this knowledge and practice. Attendees of this Agile Scrum Master course will receive 14 seiyus and access to webinars, case studies, and mock examinations created by industry professionals. We also offer other certification training, on Scrum Product Owner, Agile Leadership, Safe Scrum Master, Project Management Fundamentals, Prince 2, Idle Certification. All of the necessary information is given in the description box below. Thank you.